Einerseits. On the one hand, I've been fascinated by the mountains since my childhood in St. Gallen. I also wanted to show that the photographic history of Switzerland, particularly in connection with mountains, is fascinating. Together the images are a masterpiece created by a large group of photographers who've often been forgotten in the modest places they come from. Lokalen Residenz vergessen sind. I have a particular affection for this picture. It has meaning for me because of the memories of my youth, visiting the Appenzell countryside on holiday. And secondly, it exudes tranquility. It shows two men far removed from the hustle and bustle of the town and have found happiness up here. One can say that thanks to mountain photography, especially the photographers from abroad who started coming to Switzerland in the 19th century, a broader public was given an impression of the upper regions of the Alps. A classic motif of mountain photography, a glacier table. This is a bold mountain guide who dared go under the massive block of granite. If it had collapsed, he would never have escaped. Mountains have a great importance in the history of photography since sales of their pictures, along with portraits, were the most important source of income for local photographers. Visiting tourists from Germany, France and Britain wanted to take home pictures of mountains. Prominent photographers, even some from abroad, began to open ateliers in all of the big resorts in Canton Graubünden, for example. This picture makes it possible to imagine what it meant to reach such heights at a time when one needed porters to carry the photographic equipment. And especially in the early years, when film could not be preserved easily, one had to process the pictures immediately. If at the beginning high alpine regions were photographed, mostly glaciers and their frightening crevasses, the subjects became more varied. Pictures were taken of the life under the glaciers and flowers and forests. And mountain sports became a main theme due to the demand for such images from the buying public. This image was taken by a friend from my youth, Herbert Meider, who I haven't seen for 70 years. He took the picture through his legs of a climbing partner while ascending a steep face. Amazing. A photograph by the construction entrepreneur Vosche. Unbelievable. How long did he have to wait until the ibex were in the right position for this picture? Animals in the forlorn Alps. The Swiss Alps have contributed to the country's identity over the centuries. I'm not only referring to the mountains as a fortress into which the Swiss army could retreat during the Second World War, but a place where nature remains unconquerable and a reserve which man can't destroy, unlike large stretches of the Swiss lowlands that are victims of urban sprawl. This is also an alpine landscape. It's from the English photographer Sebastian Devenish, who spent his youth here and documented such scenes. Not only high cliffs, but mountain streams. The Russian pianist Boris Rubikin, who lives in Canada, visited Val d'Arens many times to take pictures. He was very successful. This shows the evening mood in a valley where artists like to gather. It was also important for me to shed a better light on little-known or completely unknown photographers. On top of that, I wanted to give a voice to a new generation. For example, Jan Gross and his avalanche images. It's interesting that these young people want to show a different side of the Alps. The Alps, they should be taken seriously. And they can at times be terrifying and have destructive powers, especially when we don't respect them.